I probably don't need to convince you about learning JavaScript. You probably already learning JavaScript and you feel like there's a need for you to learn frameworks because you need a developer job because you need to pay for your bills and it's a little messy and you need a framework to help you to code a little bit faster. In today's video, we are going to talk about how to choose the JavaScript framework that is best for you. Hello everybody, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Vicky May and I am a full-time software engineer working in New York City. In this channel, you are going to learn so many things about how to learn to code and web development and also all things related to tech. Before I get into today's topic, I do wanted to kind of share a little bit background and histories about JavaScript. So JavaScript was invented by Brandon Inch in 1995, which is considered kind of young, right? It's definitely younger than me. Back in the days, um, it was designed as a scripting language for the use of the company's browser, Netscape Navigator. Uh, Netscape is a browser company and it's been there forever. Initially, the language was named as LiveScript instead of JavaScript. And Netscape changed the name to JavaScript later on. Java and JavaScript are totally different programming languages. I know that oftentimes people get confused with those two languages because they all had Java and it sounds like they are related, but honestly, they are completely different programming languages. So in 2008, the creation of Google's open source Chrome V8, it, which is a high performance JavaScript engine. Soon after that, Node.js was born and it provided a way to run JavaScript code from outside of a browser, which is a turning point for JavaScript because for the longest time, JavaScript was just considered as a browser run programming language. This was quite interesting because it freed JavaScript from the browsers and led JavaScript directly to most of the developers who were not just based on front end, but also getting its popularities in the server side. And today you can use JavaScript to write all kinds of applications. Most major online companies today, including Facebook or also known as Meta, Twitter, Google, Netflix, are all using JavaScript in their products. Okay, enough of history. So let's talk about how we should choose frameworks, how you feel about these frameworks are more important than which one is the best. Why I'm saying this is because tools are supposed to provide to you to help you to feel right, to help you to feel productive. Instead of waiting for someone to tell you that this is the best framework that you should learn, I wanted to give you a little bit of tip. And these are the things that I'm going to talk about that you should really consider before you choosing a JavaScript framework. So number one is how many learning resources you can find. This seems to be very obvious, but a lot of people sometimes just overlooked. As a beginner, you need courses, books, documentations, tutorials, and even articles to help you to get started. The truth is having all of those materials in different forms will help you to speed up your learning curves. And if you are having a really hard time to find resources to learn in that framework, and also as well as articles and tutorials online, that could be a red flag. And sometimes that could just be that either this framework is super new that have not been tested enough to the public or just haven't been gaining the same level of popularity amount the developer community. So I would be very careful about choosing those frameworks to learn as your first or second JavaScript framework. In the previous videos, I did talk about one of the quick tips that I said that would help you to learn faster in JavaScript. And if you have not checked out that video, I would highly recommend to check out that video. Number two is popularity. And if a framework is not so popular, that means there are a few developers who are specializing in it. What happens if you run into a particular issue and 
you can't find any supports, right? Unfortunately, if you can't find any supports online or if you can't find anyone who is specializing that framework to help you to debug, it will set you back from learning ahead. Also, let's not forget about finding a job, right? Like you need at least master one type of JavaScript framework at least on your resume, at least on the past work projects that you've done. Let's say that they don't really care about you have had experience with a older JavaScript framework. That's fine. They can teach you during, you know, onboarding or your first few months when you're joining the company. But the fact is that it's going to take them longer to train you and keep you up to speed. And all of these things are all factor into how they choose who they wanted to hire, especially when those employers are not the big tech companies. The chances of them having those resources to like teach you, to train you, to push you up to speed is lower. So therefore, you are putting yourself in a very disadvantaged position when you're learning something that is outdated and unpopular. One of the quickest way that you can determine if the framework is popular or not is by going into those GitHub pages and look into how many people are starting that project. Um, just looking through GitHub pages will help you to like quickly determine if this framework or this library is popular or not. Just for the records, for JavaScript, most of the popular frameworks are usually React, Angular. And I know that Vue has gained some popularities over the years, but I would still say that one of the popular frameworks still till today is usually React. Number three is the integration with other plugins and libraries. The framework that you choose and how popular that framework is, there might be features in the future that you want to add onto your application. And there are times that you will need to do research to think about how do you integrate creating all these interesting features into your application. If you are ending up choosing a library or a framework and it happens to be React, definitely check out this video, how to learn or become a React developer. If you are not and you're still debating on what programming languages to choose, definitely check out some of the videos that I have over here that walk you through some step-by-step -step as a beginner to trying to learn to program. Hope this video is helpful. Until next time, I will talk to you soon. Stay safe and adios.